if it weren't for seedsmen, we wouldn't have any food. You know, it's really that cut and dry. It's really that simple. Ready? You pull it to you, grab it. That's it. So you're trying to find green wheat to cut. That's beautiful, Sean. This is Ammer, better known in Italy as Faro Medio. And it was brought here by Italians uh, by 1676 as a winter crop. This stuff grows when there's no rain. This stuff grows when there's tons of rain. This stuff grows everywhere. This is a lot, man. Isn't it? <laughs> Eight Holy acres. Holy cow. Just seed. There's Glenn standing there looking over this beautiful field of farro, which, you know, to a lot of people would just be a field of grass. But to him, he's replaying the entire history of that plant and wondering what's next. Us is the idea of celebrating Southern ingredients, and without Glenn, those ingredients don't exist. Seed really isn't present. You know, the idea, everybody wants local, quote unquote, but they don't stop and think about what sort of integrity you have to have in farming in order to keep seed pure to guarantee the food's gonna be there in two decades. This is part of the very first rice rotations in the colonies, and the reason why they brought it with them is because it grows like a weed when it's comfortable. The mission is to get as much land race, which is what most people would call heirloom, heritage. Uh, land race actually is a very true idea of farmer improved, no science. It's actually, I'm in the field, I'm zen in the field, this is my food, and I'm thinking about it all the time. Yeah, I've wanted to use one of these for a long time. On who? This wheat. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is sharp. This is a seedsman's version. Yeah, it's supposed to be sharp. <laughs> Faro is, to me, like really one of the most purest things that you can cook because it's untouched. It hasn't gone through that terrible state that wheat has gone through. Why do you think there's so many gluten allergies these days? Because we're modifying these plants so much that our bodies just aren't used to it. The faro is kind of the symbol of like, if you keep it pure, you know, this is the way to go. It's going to be delicious. It's going to be incredible. And it's easy to keep it pure if you just care. Uh, I've grown seed crops for Glenn for six or seven years now, and it's really interesting to have the seed of a plant, and you know that those seeds are some of the last seeds of that variety that exist, and you have to go stick it in the ground. <laughs> it seems like a crazy thing to do. It's no big deal. It's only the future of Southern food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> Fire threshing is a technique used on harvested grain that is green and not yet mature. This has been done throughout history. You want to toast what's left inside the shock. Burning the farrow roasts and dries the seed so it can be hulled easily and also gives it a wonderful smoky flavor. We think about primitive civilization as primitive but when you start doing this stuff, the whole world opens up. It's not so primitive after all. Once they're in a pile, they start toasting themselves and seasoning themselves with the ash. Then you have to tread on it, beat on it, flail it. That makes a nutritional transformation because it explodes with this huge flavor profile and it's got a fabulous magnetic flavor Once you amass a whole bunch of this, then it's ready to cook. 